Shalom, shalom, Shabbat shalom. Welcome to the Yahweh and Yahshua Speak TV show. We are broadcasting from Evanston, Illinois. This is the Hebrew Husband and Wife Ministry. We're glad that you have tuned in to the show. Let's start out in Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. So we want to get understanding about all the spiritual laws, and particularly the ones that are least understood because the Father wants us, Father Yahweh in heaven wants us to understand all of his spiritual laws. Romans the 8th chapter. So if Yahweh doesn't do anything else for people, he has already done more than enough. He's already done more than enough if he doesn't do anything else for people. Romans 8. And verse 32, this is going to let you know what he did. And it reads, He that spared not his own son, or bond, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So if the Father, if Yahweh doesn't do anything else for us, he has done more than enough. It said, he didn't spare his own bond, his own son. He delivered him up. He and his son decided he knew man was going to uh, break his commandment. And he and his son decided that this was going to be the make it right gesture. It says he delivered him up, gave his life for us all. And then... It says, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So he's not holding anything back. He gave up the best, which was his son. So we have been studying the law of faith, which is among the least understood spiritual laws. And some people don't even know faith is a law. Go to Romans the third chapter. Some don't even know that faith is a law. Romans the third chapter. And we want to read verse 27. And it reads, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law or Torah or works? Say nay. But by the law of faith or ha Torah immunah. So where is boasting? When people get answers to prayers or when Yahweh, because he's good, he responds favorably in their lives, even though they may be straddling the fence in compromise or disobedience. It says, you don't need to boast about that. It's not on you. It's on him and his goodness. It says, it's excluded by what law of works? No, you can't be good enough to, to warrant what Yahweh has said he freely gives. We just read in Romans 8 chapter and verse 32. He said, of works? No, you can't work it out. He said, no, but by the law of faith. Go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter. So Yahweh said, this is a spiritual law that he's working that causes those good gifts to come down from above, as uh, Jacob or James said. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. No reason for anybody to boast other than to boast in Yahweh, brag on him. So Hebrews 11 chapter, it talks about the law of faith. So Yahweh said faith is a necessity. It is not an option. It is a necessity. It is a vital force that we human beings need. Hebrews 11 chapter, and we want to read verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 reads, But without faith or immunity, it is impossible to please him or please Yahweh. For he that cometh to Elohim, same as Yahweh, must believe that he is, that Yahweh is, not only that, but that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Notice it just didn't say he rewards those that just seek him. He said diligent about it. He said enthusiastic about it. He said fervent about it. He said 
when the pressure is on, they pass through the pressure, continuing to seek him. So he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, we're getting understanding about one of the least understood spiritual laws, which is the law of faith. And he said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. So it's impossible for people to gratify Yahweh entirely unless and until they use faith. Unless and until they use that law of faith. They cannot please Yahweh entirely. They cannot keep his commandments entirely. Go uh, to Romans, the 12th chapter. So people already have everything they need. Yahweh does not need to do anything else because he has already done more than enough. Romans, the 12th chapter. And because people cannot please Yahweh without faith, we saw in Hebrews, he said it's impossible for you to please me without faith. He's so beautiful. And I'm bragging on him. I'm boasting on him. He gives people a measure of faith along with their natural birth into the earth. That's how I can be braggadocious on him. He's so wonderful. He's so smart. He's so brilliant. He says it's impossible for people to please him without faith. So he gives them some faith with their natural birth when they're born into the earth. Romans the 12th chapter. We want to read verse 3. Romans chapter 12 and verse 3 reads, For I say or mark that, that the grace or high hand given unto me to every man or Adam that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Stop all that boasting and bragging. But to think soberly, look at this thing in truth, what actually is true. According as Elohim had dealt to every man or Adam the measure of faith or immunah. So Yahweh gave you that measure of faith. And he gives people the measure of faith to connect them to the spirit realm. So they can connect to the spirit realm in their natural bodies by that measure of faith that they gave that he they, that Yahweh gave them. So the measure of faith is called his candle. Proverbs chapter 20 and we're going to read verse 27. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 27 reads, The spirit or the ruach of man or Adam is the candle of Yahweh searching all the inward parts of the belly. So here is, this is talking about the measure of faith which is called the spirit of man, and it says it's the candle of Yahweh. It's what Yahweh has given man to be able to connect to him to the spirit realm. So the measure of faith is part of human beings' spirit life force, which is the breath of life that is given them at birth. And they say that the, the doctor has to hit the child in order for them to start breathing this oxygen air. But I'm sure the baby must be breathing oxygen in the womb. But either way, this measure of faith is part of human beings' spirit life force, force, which is the breath of life at birth when they come out of the mother's womb. Go to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. So when people reach out to get salvation, because they have this measure of faith that enables them to connect to the spirit realm, Yahweh gives them even more spiritual things. That's how good he is. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. Bragging on my, my Father in heaven again. 1 Corinthians, the second chapter. We want to read verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 12 reads, Now we have received not the spirit or the ruach of the world, but the spirit or ha ruach, which is of Elohim, 
that we might know or yada the things that are freely given to us of Elohim. So now he's talking about once humans reach out to him, people reach out to him, using that measure of faith, connect and they get salvation, he freely gives them more spiritual things. It says, now we have received, because we're, we're after the fact. We already reached out, used our measure of faith and reached out and got salvation. We have received, not the spirit of the world, we already had that when we were born at birth. And that came along with the breath of life too. It was translated down from our the first man and woman, Adam and Eve. It said, but we've received the spirit of Ruach, which is of Elohim. So when we reached out and got salvation, Yahweh, some of those more spiritual things that he gave us was his power source, which is his Ruach, his spirit, which we saw in the first sermon, and it took the place of Yeshua's presence on the earth. And it said, he, Yahweh wants us to know these, these more spiritual things that we have been freely given that come from Him. Go to, uh, we're in Colossians, we're in 1 Corinthians, let's go to Colossians, the second chapter. So salvation includes baptism. Going to Colossians 2. And baptism is the vehicle through which Yahweh gives more spiritual things freely. So there, you'll see uh, people on uh, TV, and they'll just say the, the prayer and confess their sins and accept uh, the Son as their Savior. But if they don't move on to get baptized, they don't get the rest of the spiritual things. They may have salvation, but they won't be able to do anything here in the earth because they'll be powerless. They'll be weak. And what the devil has done to some people, they got baptized, they received salvation, they got uh, baptism, they got the things that, because baptiz baptism is a vehicle through which Yahweh gives the more spiritual things freely, they have all those spiritual things that he's given them and are clueless to what they have. Not using them, don't understand them. But that's why Yahweh sets up people so he can let us know, each one of us, what we have. And so then we can start using it. Colossians, the second chapter, we want to read verse 12. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 12 reads, Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the Imina of the operation of Elohim, who hath raised him from the dead, or Hamu. So it's, it's, it's talking about this being enmeshed with the Son through baptism. It said, buried with him in baptism. That went with him is talking about Yeshua, talking about the Son, through which we saw in the first show, he gave his life for the transgressions of the wicked, which you and I used to be. He said, wherein also ye are risen up, you came up out of the water, symbolizing, it says you came up with him. Now he's talking about this, the law of faith, this least under, one of the least understood spiritual laws. It says, you came up with him through the faith of the operation of Elohim. Yahweh using this, the law of faith, as a vehicle for you to access these more spiritual more spiritual things that are freely given to you. You got the measure of faith that your natural birth. There's a whole bunch of people got the measure of faith and they will never connect to the spirit realm. They will never reach out to Yahweh to get salvation. So if you did, you are very, very, very blessed. It says, through the faith, the law of faith, which is the operation of Elohim or Yahweh, who have raised him, talking about the Savior, Yeshua, from Hamuth or from the dead. So that's how he was raised from the dead. Yeshua was using the law of faith from the time he was on the earth, but he really started using the law of faith when he got baptized. 
go to uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter. So, the question is, why does it seem as if people did not get what Yahweh freely gives? What's going on? They need some understanding. That's why he has people stand up and teach them and let them know. And they think they're waiting to get something when, that they already have. But it does seem as if people did not get what Yahweh freely gives. But it's on them. It's not on Yahweh. He left his word for us to get in here and study the scriptures. And he also gave us that free gift of his power source to enable us to study the scriptures and to glean from the scriptures what he wants us to glean from the scriptures. So we can understand the least understood spiritual laws, not only understand them, but operate them. Galatians, the fifth chapter. We want to read verses five to six. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and verses five to six reads, For we, through the spirit of Haruah, wait for the hope of righteousness, or Sadakah, by faith, or Immunah. For if Yahshua Mashiach, for in Yahshua Mashiach, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, or Immunah, which worketh by a hand or love. So he's saying this is the position that you're in once you use your measure of faith to connect to Yahweh. You received your salvation. You got baptized. Then he started giving you those more spiritual things. It says, we through the spirit, through the Ruach, we wait for the hope of Sadakai by Immunah. We wait for the understanding. We get in here and we study to show ourselves approved unto him. And he shows us his, 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 his power source, his ruach. He's showing us a way to rightly divide the word so we can add this to our understanding. And out of all our getting, get understanding about exactly what it is that we connected to the spirit realm to get and to do in the earth it all involves our destiny that we're fulfilling in the earth saying so so we're waiting for the hope of righteousness by faith for in yahshua mashiach that's what we did when we got baptized we got into yahshua mashiach and he got into us and it's talking about his word being in us and us being in him and living that way it says Neither circumcision availeth anything. So just because we're natural born Hebrews, he said, that's not important. But that does mean that you're among that group that he said to stand up and teach my law, statutes, and commandments, and stand up and be right and do right, and stand up and show people how to connect to the spirit realm. So then if they're not natural Israel, they can become spiritual Israel. Either way, whether they're natural or not, they have to become spiritual. They have to do both. He said, but the, the, that, your circumcision is, is not going to cut. He says, nor uncircumcision. So if you, even if you're not of natural Israel, you're uncircumcised. You're, you're on the, the same playing field. You're on the same level. He said, but faith, which works by love, so he's telling us now about this, this connection to the spirit realm to where this law of faith can only be operated because Yahweh is love. His son Yahshua is love. It can only be operated by you getting that same love, adopting that same manner of being. So Yahshua's dying for people's transgressions give them salvation and his faith. That is what is being in Yahshua Mashiach. So you not only have your measure of faith, you got Yahshua's faith when you got baptized. Him dying for your transgressions and your accepting that gave you salvation and it also gave you his faith. That's another reason he said, I'm going to send the power source, another comforter, he was a comforter, but he said, I'm going to send you Ruach Kakadash, which is the power source that he and the Father used to get things done. 
I'm going to give you another comforter to be with you and in you. So you add salvation when you got baptized. You got Yeshua's faith in the form of the power source, Ruach HaKadosh. So we're in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Let's go to Galatians, the third chapter. So people do not understand them using their measure of faith get salvation. And when they get baptized, it gets Yeshua's faith too. So you can go through life with your measure of salvation. You're only going to be doing a few little things on a, on a natural level. You're going to be disconnected from the spirit realm. Galatians, the third chapter, and verse 22. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 22 reads, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin or hata'ah, that the promise by Imina or faith of Yahshua Mashiach, see, he's talking about Yahshua's faith now. The Imina of Yahshua Mashiach might be given to them that believe. So here, that believing was connected to the spirit realm using your measure of faith. People don't reach out to Yahweh if they don't believe. Then, once they believe, then they repent, they get baptized, they receive salvation, and then they get those, those more spiritual things that he freely gives. It says that the promise, that's part of the promise. You read in Acts, the second chapter, where he said, <coughs> the promise is unto all, and as many as believe that he would give them the gift of the Holy Spirit, or Ruach HaKadosh. It took the place of Yahshua. So here it's saying here, that the promise, using the law of faith, you notice know it said by faith, of Yahshua Mashiach, might be given to those of us that believe. So that's what we got. But this is one of the least understood spiritual laws. Why is that? Because there are so many people just operating on this natural level. Yahweh's not holding anything back. But we have to come to understand that he has more to freely give us. And he said, it's impossible for you to get it without operating the vehicle that he gave you. What? Faith. The law of faith. And it's not, I was using uh, an example, I believe it was last Shabbat. It's not to where you just hold your breath, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, and just hold your breath, and just believe, believe. No, he gave you his word. It's not about that at all. He gave you his word to stand on. We're gonna find out his word is the foundation you're standing on. Take his scriptures, stand on his scriptures, say his word. You don't have to hold your breath and, and whatever you're trying to stand in faith for. It's not about you. It's about what he has freely given you and what he's done for you. It's about you finding out what you actually have. So you can stop waiting to get something you already got. He said, the faith of Yahshua is given to those of us that believe. Verse 23. But before faith of him and I came, we were kept or shemar under the law of HaTorah, shut up unto the faith or HaImina, which should afterwards be revealed. So you don't come to an understanding of this, get an understanding of this law of faith, till after you get salvation. And even then, some people after they get salvation, Roman Christianity has told them what salvation is, so they spend their whole life uh, surfacing surfing on, on top of the scriptures and not letting Yahweh take them deeper so they can learn these some of these um, most least understood laws and start operating them. He said, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. Okay, keep his commandments. That's good. But that's not the end of it. 
that's just what you do as you go along the journey. But here's another law, a spiritual law, the law of faith. He said we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith. What's the faith? He's talking about Yahshua's faith. He's talking about Yahshua's faith where he said, I say unto you, if you say unto this mountain, move. He's not talking about you. He's talking about the faith of Yahshua that you got at salvation. You saw what Yahshua's faith did. It raised the dead. It cleansed the lepers. He gave you the same faith. He gave you his faith. So we need to come to an understanding of what, about what we have been given. It's not dependent on us. It's dependent on us getting in here and understanding what he has given us. That's what's dependent on us. And then, once you understand it, working with him so he can show you how to operate it and use it. So we were kept under the law, shut up until the faith which should afterwards be revealed. You only come to understand this after you have received salvation, after you have been baptized, after you have received the things that Yahweh has freely given you, which is his power source, Ruach HaKadosh, which is helping you rightly divide the scriptures and study his word. Um, we're in Galatians, let's go to Galatians, the second chapter. So Yahshua's faith is the faith revealed after salvation. Salvation opens the door to using the law of faith with Yahshua's faith to get every prayer we pray answered. When we use Yahshua's faith, we get answers to every prayer. Galatians, the second chapter, um, we want to read verse 16. Galatians, chapter 2, and verse 16 reads, Knowing that a man or Adam is not justified by the works of the law or HaTorah, but what's he justified by? By the faith of Yahshua Mashiach. By Ha'imina of Yahshua Mashiach. See, it's, it's steady talking about Yahshua's faith. Even we have believed in Yahshua Mashiach, but you got to believe in his faith too. That we might be justified, he said it twice in this verse, by Ha'imina or the faith of Yah of Mashiach, or the Messiah, the Savior. Not by the works of the law, the Torah. Doesn't mean you don't need to keep them, but you're not justified by that. For by the works of the law or the Torah shall no flesh be justified. And see, uh, uh, Roman Christianity likes to take this and then tell you you don't need to keep the law. No, you need to, to do both. But if you want to transact business in the spirit world, you've got to understand that it is by Yahshua's faith. Hebrews 11, 6, where he said it's impossible for you to please me, well, that's why he sent his son. He gave you the measure. But he said, if you really want to pre please and, and gratify and satisfy him entirely, he said, get salvation, get baptized, accept Yahshua as your Savior, accept Yahshua's faith to operate and justify you. This is what he said, hey, by the faith of Yeshua Mashiach. He said, you, you're not going to be justified by keeping the commandments. Well, so those people are telling you, okay, you keep the commandments, keep the ten, keep the however many. That's good, but that, that's, that's not justifying you. He's saying you are justified by the faith of Yahshua Mashiach. Let's go to Proverbs 22nd chapter. It says, so by the works of the law, by keeping the commandments, Nobody, no flesh is going to be justified. He said, that's not good enough. He said, bring it up higher. Now, he brought it up higher. Proverbs 22nd chapter. But the wonderful thing about him is he, he didn't leave you hanging. Yahshua came to bring you up higher. He shed his blood for you to be up higher. And understand, you've been brought up higher. So now it's time for you to understand what you have and start using what you have. Start where you are, 
Use what you have. Do what you can. And guess what? Scripture said nothing is impossible for you to do. But get your eyes off yourself. It's not you. It's using Yahshua's faith. It's using the things that you have been freely given. They don't originate with you. None of that originates with you. And that becomes a big stumbling block for some people. But the love, please don't let it be a stumbling block for you. Give Yahweh his credit. Give him his high five. Give him his kudos. Give him his bragging points. Give him his glory. Just give it all to him. Because he freely gave it all to you. Now you've got to find out what you got and to use what you have. Proverbs 22, and uh, I'm going to read verses 17 to 21, but I want to say this first. So when people understand the law of faith, they understand the law is used with Yahshua's faith. And when they don't understand it, they think it's just them. Just hold your breath long enough, fast enough, just, just keep believing. I believe, I believe, I believe. No. When you understand the law of faith, you understand it's used with Yahshua's faith. Yahshua's faith is a sure thing. Always will be. All right, so Proverbs 22nd chapter, and we're going to read verses 17 to 21, and it reads, Bow down thine ear, and hear the words of the Dabarim of the wise of the Kakam, and apply thy heart or thy labor, your mind, unto my knowledge. Yahweh talking about nothing. Listen now, apply to my knowledge. He said, look, my knowledge is, is high, as high above the earth as the heavens are. So, so, so you, you got to get in here and study, and you need a study tool. You need a study vehicle. What is it? Yahweh's power source within you giving you the ability to study these scriptures and to understand them and glean from his words what his ways are and what he's actually saying. You don't get this because you're so smart. You don't get this because you got straight A's in, in uh, secular school. That's good. Get your straight A's. But get your hand off your back, Pat, and you like it's, it's on you because you can say words so good or you're, you you can, can spell words so good or say so good. Again, it is not you, beloved. It says, bow down thine ear and hear the words of the wise and apply your mind unto his knowledge. This is what we're doing now, his knowledge. That's why there's some spiritual laws that he put out here that are least understood. Verse 18. It says, for it is a pleasant thing if thou keep or shamar them within thee. They shall withal be fitted in thy lips. So here he's saying it's a pleasant thing if you keep them. He's supposed to keep them within you. He talked to us about us being, there was the, the literal garden of Aden or Eden that the first man and woman were in. But now, Yahweh's so smart, he's done a new thing. He's put a garden within each of us. And that garden started out with his candle. That garden started out as his measure of faith. And now he says, sow his word, or plant his word, or hear his word, and, and keep it within you in that garden. He said in uh, Yeshua, Isaiah, you'll be a well-watered garden bringing forth fruit no matter what age you are. Why? Because you, you understand another least understood spiritual law, that, that your spirit that he's put within you, that his power source is joined up with, that is the literal garden inside you. You read in Psalms where he said, you'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters. So you're a tree too. And you're supposed to have some righteous trees growing up inside you. But he said, it's a pleasant thing if you keep these words, his knowledge, within you. How are you going to do that? He's not just talking about your head. He's talking about another part of you. And they shall withal be fitted in your lips. So you can tell 
you, you, you put them in something other than your head, you can memorize scripture, nothing wrong with that. But to put it in the part where he said into your garden and plant it in your garden and plant it within you, he's talking about something other than just your head. Put it in both places, but make sure if you put it in the right part within you, then it's within you and it's going to stay within you and nobody can get to it to dig it up. Verse 19, that thy trust of a talk may be in Yahweh. I have made known or Yada to thee this day or Yom, even to thee. Have not I written to thee excellent things and counsels and knowledge or Yada, that I might make thee know or Yada the certainty of the words of Emmet or Hadabarim Emmet, that thou mightest answer the words of Emmet or Hadabarim Emmet to them that, that send unto thee. So when people come to us, that we might understand what Yahweh wants us to understand and know to be able to answer them and to let them know. And with the faith being, a, with, with, without faith it being impossible to please Yahweh, to please the Father, you would think more people would, would understand and know about the law of faith. But, bless the mighty Yah, the word is getting out. Go to John, the ninth chapter. So, so you, you understand when uh, the words are being kept within a person because they come out of their lips, set out of their mouth. And what comes out of their mouth? The words of Yahweh. John, the ninth chapter. John the ninth chapter. <clears throat> so when people understand the law of faith, they understand the law is used totally depending on Yahweh. So we have to step aside. He's using us as a vessel. But um, no. Our position is just to remain totally open to him. Totally surrendered, totally submissive. And also understand that we're totally dependent on Him. You take your next breath without depending on Him. See if you can do it. Or you go in the hospital and get a ventilator or whatever it is, but let Him turn the ventilator off and you're unable to breathe. See how many breaths you're going to take. When people understand the law of faith, they understand the law is used totally depending on Yahweh. John chapter 9, and we want to read verse 33. And it reads, if this, if this man or Adam were not of Elohim, he could do nothing. And here's this uh, person that was healed, and he's talking about Yahshua. He's saying, hey, if this man were not of Yahweh, if some supernatural intervention had not occurred, he wouldn't have been healed. He said, uh, you talk about Yahshua and you saying he's not this and he ain't that. He said, all I know is, I don't know if this is a lame man or blind man. He said, well, whatever I had, I don't have it anymore. I'm healed. And he said, and if he were not of uh, Elohim or Yahweh, of uh, the mighty one, he could do nothing. That's what we all have to, to come to understanding. Without him, we can do nothing. All right, go to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. So adding the measure of faith to Yahshua's faith is how the law of faith is used. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Adding the measure of faith to the law of faith. And in the measure of faith to Yeshua's faith, it's how the law of faith is used. Ephesians chapter 5. We want to read verse 17. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 17. Read. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding or being what the will of Yahweh is. So he said, so, so you get to a certain point 
<clears throat> in, in Bible study and studying the scriptures in the word, in your spiritual growth, where he's saying, okay, now don't be unwise. These are some laws are least understood, but it should not be least understood by you because you're connected to Yahweh. It should not be not operated by you because you're hearing and you're getting in, in Yahweh's word every day and you're studying his word. But understand, it's not just you studying the word with your, with your natural mind. He gave you the teacher which is Yahshua through his power source. He gave you the instructor, which is Yahshua through his power source. He gave you the studier. He gave you the tutor, which is Yahshua through Ruach HaKadosh. Every time you go into this word, ask Ruach to help you study the word. He said, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of Yahweh is. The will is for Yahweh to freely use the things that he has freely given you. And not let people tell you what you don't have. He's telling you what you do have. So believe that. Go to John, the 15th chapter. John, or Yachanan, the 15th chapter. So Yahweh's will is for people to know they can and are to do nothing without him. You can't. Now you can, you can do some stuff, but um, Yahweh's not in it. And it's not going to profit. And it's going to bring <coughs> discontent. It's going to bring instability. And it's going to be, like the scriptures say, like the chaff that the wind blows away. Like those little dandelion flowers where one day they're nice and pretty and yellow, and then they just become a like white puff of, of light looking things, and then the wind comes and they just poof, blow away. So Yahweh's will is for people to know they can and are to do nothing without Him. The law of faith has His word as the foundation. So, and this is what some people don't understand. Before you go praying the prayer, now you can pray the prayer if you know that there's a scripture to back it up. But you're supposed to go into the scripture to find the prayer for whatever issue, whatever challenge you're facing. Then use that scripture and shoot it like a, a bullet into whatever the problem or whatever issue it is that you're, you're facing. And you shoot it like a bullet with your mouth, with your lips. We just saw that. That's using the law of faith with Yahshua's faith. You know when he went into the, the, uh, the desert to be tempted of Hasatan, he was shooting bullets at Hasatan. Hasatan was trying to shoot some at him, but Yahshua had the machine gun. And he was just saying, it is written, da 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 It is written, da 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 it is written, da 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 and, and after a while, Hasatan said, Ooh, wait, I, I got to, I'm, I'm riddled with bullets. Just like the gangsters riddled the car with bullets. He said, I, I got to back off here. I'm not, I'm not getting anywhere. He keeps saying, it is written. He keeps using that law of faith. Da 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 What's he shooting? Shooting Yahweh's word? So the law of faith has Yahweh's word as the foundation. His word is the start and the end. So that's where you have that sure foundation because you're standing on the word. That's a promise. That's one of the things he has freely given you with salvation. But if you don't understand that, then you may be thinking in, in your mind, beloved, whatever scripture you can know off the top of your head or whatever. No, write it out. Look at it. Say it to yourself every day. And keep doing like Yeshua did, da -da 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 -da, shooting it right into the center of whatever it is that you're, you're, you're facing. John 15, and we want to read verse 7. <clears throat> John chapter 15 and verse 7. Read, if ye abide in me, and my words of Dabarim abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. So here is, is Yeshua teaching you 
about the law of faith, teaching us about the law of faith, one of these least understood laws. He said, you got to, to, to live, you got to stay. He didn't say with me. What did he say? He said, in me. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. How you stand in him? He said, and my words stay in you. How they gonna stay in you? If you understand you got this garden inside you, you got the garden of Eden inside you now, that you plant his word in, which is the same as your spirit, which is the same as that measure of faith, which is what has been joined with Yeshua's faith, which has been joined with the, the power source, Ruach Kakadash. Then you got a dwelling place for the word, for you to stay in him and his words to stay in you. He said then, you're going to be operating the law of faith. He said, then you ask what you, you will, and it's, it's being done. Every single prayer is being answered. So trials come with using the law of faith. Trials come to establish the quality, performance, and reliability of the type of faith people are using. See, because <clears throat> if you don't understand the law of faith, you won't be standing on Yahweh's word. You won't be firing that word out like bullets to attack the problem, to attack where it is, to bring the answer, the promise that Yahweh said you have. You'll think it's on you. You'll think if you can believe hard enough, you'll think if you can pray long enough, and people have told you, <clears throat> to keep asking over and over and over. Yahweh told you don't use no vain repetition. Yahweh said I'm not deaf. Yahweh said I heard you the first time you prayed. Yahweh said understand how the law of faith operates. He said once you pray believe you have received it and you know you have received it because you got in the word and you saw oh Yahweh said he gave me this. So you can cut out a whole bunch of unnecessary steps by just following what he said and believing what he said. So trials come to test the quality, performance, and reliability of the type of faith people are using. And when you're using Yahshua's faith, it's on. They say it's on like popcorn. It's on like Donkey Kong. It's like Hasatan's getting beat up. He's giving up. he got to give up whatever it is that you're standing with Yahshua to bring the past in your life. So trials also arise between the time prayer is prayed and an answer appears. First Peter, the first chapter. <coughs> first Peter, the first chapter. So after the prayer is prayed and you believe you receive, and you do that because that's what Yahweh said. He said, when you pray, believe you receive the answer. So that's another part of the, the law of faith. So if you believe you receive the answer, what you keep asking for it again and again and again? You're supposed to be thanking and praising Yahweh that you got it. Regardless of whether you see it then or not, he's letting you know what the procedure is. Uh, first Peter, the first chapter. So trials come when you're using the law of faith. And they arrive between the time the prayer is prayed and an answer appears. First Peter, the first chapter, and we want to read verse 7. First Peter, chapter 1, verse 7, and it reads, That the trial of your faith, or your immunah, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise or halal, and honor or kabod, and glory, O Kabod, at the appearing of Yahshua Mashiach. So here he said, uh, <clears> there's <throat> a faith trial. It says the trial of your faith. But it's precious. It says it's much more precious than of gold. Because gold, it says, it, it perishes. It goes down. So gold is not everlasting. But the trial of your faith, 
That's something that lasts forever. That's something that endures. When you understand how to pass the trial. And when you're using Yahshua's faith, you know it's like, you know, I, <laughs> I, 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 my finger's not snapping, but it's easy. Easier than easy. He said, the trial of your faith is much more precious than a goal, because gold <clears throat> eventually won't be. Though it be tried with fire, it might be found under praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yeshua Mashiach. Just like when the three Hebrew men were in the fiery furnace, that was a trial of their faith. So that's a, a, a factual account where all of a sudden here's uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, wait, wait, we threw three men in there. Now there's four in the middle. So when these fiery faith trials come, you're using the faith of Yahshua. Guess what? Yahshua shows up there. and vanquishes all the stuff, as long as you're standing and praising Yahweh and, and believing you got the answer, don't have any concern about, oh, you don't see it yet, so what? Just like the three Hebrew men were in the fiery furnace, and then it says, the honor and the glory in the appearing of Yahshua Mashiach. So this is Yahweh letting them demons know because we, we see in Donnyell, we may not get to that today, to where they have some ability to, to hold back the answers to the prayer, but they can't stop it. They have some ability to delay some things, but they can't stop it from coming. Long as us that initiated it understand how to, to operate that law of faith, and understand that Yeshua is going to do just like he did for those three Hebrew men. He's going to come right in the middle of it, and he is in the middle of it, and he's telling them demons to back off. Just like the demons had to beg him when he met, met the, the madman in uh, <coughs> Legion. That was the name of the demon. <coughs> and uh, Yeshua said, come out of them. They said, well, 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 can you send us into the pigs? begging Yahshua. See, you got to understand what position Yahshua has given you, what Yahweh has freely given you. And Yahshua said, yeah, go into the pig, but they had to come out of the man. So this, Yahweh said, the faith trial is precious and it comes with fire. But Yahshua appears in the midst of that fire, just like he did with the three Hebrew men. And he gets them demons straight and said, look, give it up, give it up now. The fiery faith trial is the disagreement that opposes people using the higher law of faith with Yahshua's faith on the earth. That's where the, where the trial comes in. Because the enemy is trying to see, all right, I, I, do they really understand they're standing on Yahshua's faith or... Do they think it's them that has to bring it to pass? Do, are they really standing on Yahweh's word? And one way you can let the demons know you're really standing on Yahweh's word is every day you're confessing them scriptures, da 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 da, -da shooting like a machine gun at him. Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. So the, the fiery faith trial is the disagreement that opposes you and I using the higher law of faith with Yeshua's faith on the earth. Deuteronomy, the 33rd chapter. Then we want to read verses 1 to 3. Deuteronomy, chapter 33. And verses 1 to 3 reads. And this is the blessing for Ha'erakah. We're with Moshe, the man or Ha'adam of Elohim, Barak or blessed, the children of Israel or Ha'ban of Israel before his Mabed or death. And he said to Amar, Yahweh came from Sinai and rose up from Seir unto them. He shined forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousands of saints or Kadashim. 
from his right or your main hand with a fiery law for them. What's this fiery law talking about? This fiery law is talking about the law of faith. You see, people limited to his commandments, but you don't keep the, the commandments unless you believe in Yahweh, unless you want to please Yahweh. But just keeping the commandments, just to be keeping them and thinking that's, that's getting you something, no. People disobey the commandments all the time. But when they want to please Yahweh, they understand this is something higher than this just keeping the commandments, however many the people think they are. But it said there was a fiery law that came from his right hand. All right, verse 3. It says, yea, he loved or have the people or my hand. All his saints, or Kadashim, are in thy hand. And they sat down at his feet. Everyone, or Akkad, shall receive of thy Dabarim, or thy words. So he says, hey, he loved the people. All his saints are in his hand. And we sat down at his feet. We sit at his feet now. And learning his ways, and learning how to, how to operate and learning how to stay connected to the spirit realm and transact business in the spirit realm and bring it to earth. Uh, let's go back to 1 Peter and we'll go, to, go to the fourth chapter this time. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. So the fiery faith trial challenges the foundation upon which the law of faith is being used. challenges the foundation upon which the law of faith is being used. And if you don't have Yahweh's word as your foundation, guess what? It's just like Quick said. You're not going to pass the fiery faith trial. It challenges whether it is based on Yahweh's word and Yahshua's faith. 1 Peter, the fourth chapter. And we want to read verse 12. 1 Peter. Chapter 4 and verse 12 reads, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you 